Earth as we know it today was completely different in 1829. There were many lakes, swamps, very close to the river. In fact, down along where the Perth city is built today was all marshy sort of river land. Our people used to camp there. As I've understood it throughout the history of Whitefellas, they filled in many of those waterways and swamps and built their buildings on top of it with little respect for Aboriginal people's wishes. And there in the early history lied the reason for conflict with the settlers and Aboriginal people, or the Noongar, the Wachak Noongars from this country. Wake up, wake up, they call. Wake up, wake up, they call. This was a paradise. We believed uh, in our dream time that this was uh, all carved out for the people of the Swan River, and, uh, and we were all moots of the, uh, of the Woggle. Everything balanced out, and, and this is how they survived for tens of thousands of years, and the ecology and everything they looked after, and that looked after them. And there was plenty of food. The people didn't worry about anything. And people now say, well, they rescued us from living a life like that. They rescued us from paradise. That's what they did. This square here, Well Square, and a few others close to Perth, were used as meeting grounds for Aboriginal people who needed to come to Perth or who were stranded in Perth or who actually had that association with Perth and lived in Perth. People would come from all over the state, and if they're in Perth, this is where they'd connect. This would be the main park where people would connect to find people. And it was a famous area for young people to congregate. Um, and that was for all sorts of reasons, because it wasn't safe to go into the city. So we were in an area that was safe. Just behind me, Newcastle Street, was the line that people used as the restricted area. And it sort of went around Perth and down to parts of Perth on the river. Uh, but it, it secluded the, uh, the environment of the Perth city. If you got caught by a nasty cop or a nasty official, yeah, you were in for a hard time. After 1954, it would have taken Aboriginal people a long time to readjust to been able to go confidently over the restricted area. I could remember uh, a dance here at the Braille Hall. It was 1952. We came from Eden Hill, so we uh, kicked the bus and we got off here and, and found our way to Braille Hall. We've been watching you Meow. For a long time cool. Yeah, we've been watching you Meow. For a long time Bo. a fight over in the park. There was a couple of blokes either fighting over a family dispute or fighting over a woman or a young, young yorga. I remember one night that uh, I got challenged in this park and I had to stand up to defend my honour. And there were always people there to properly adjudicate. It was always stand up, use your fists, fight with your fists. And when the first bloke drops and he says no more, well, that's it, the fight's over. The Aboriginal Advancement Council was a place where young people were encouraged to come into Perth, Aboriginal people, and uh, share those social, uh, that social need by dancing and catching up with other young Aboriginal people and just enjoying being Noongar, for want of a better word, because uh, we didn't have any other places to go to, really. And look, dare I say it, but uh, we still have a lot of racism in this country, and there's a fair bit of it in this city. This park would have been just about in the middle of all these Aboriginal activities. Down on Beaufort Street, we had AMS. Behind me here, ALS. This always was a meeting place. It's probably dropped off a little now, as I said, with the advent of Noongar Radio across the road and the only Aboriginal-owned um, catering companies. I think there's still a, 
a strong connection to this park. I'm the manager for the Cuttage Kitchen. We do, uh, we have the cafe and catering. This building is very significant to Aboriginal people. It's actually owned by the Aboriginal Advancement Council and it was bought in the 1960s with funds that they raised and the government of the day matched them. In recent times now, it's a park where people meet here, but we've got these move on notices now, so a lot of people are maybe arrested if they're coming here. These people who get moved on, and I've seen them, they have to go to court and face on why they didn't move on, and they get fined 200 bucks, or they might get a little bit of time in jail. And it's quite a traumatic experience for us Aboriginal leaders having to see that happening to our people. It was never called World Square. Everybody came to Beaufort Park, because that's where everyone met. They would have found their lifetime partner in this park. There are people that have died here in this park, you know, so it has a lot of significance still to people, even though it's not frequent and as much as it was in those days. So, yeah, it's, a, I think, a, as I say, an icon in, in uh, our local culture. No me younger in front of the fire. No me younger in front of the fire. No me younger in front of the fire. No me younger, but in the young man.